Hi, this is Kerry Artech with Artech Advisory, and this is the AgriTalk PM video supplement for AgriTalk Show um, Monday, August 16th, in which I cover three markets, December 21 corn, December 21 cotton, and October 21 crude oil. Uh, before I jump into the charts, just want to encourage you, you're probably at my website already or right now, uh, you know, fill out the free trial form. If you haven't had a free trial, if you had had a free trial, as long as it hasn't been in the last six months, I'm happy to provide another two-week free trial, uninterrupted daily analysis in a broad range of markets, including the grains, livestock, etc. Um, you know, you'll get a call from me during the two weeks, maybe a couple calls from me. One will be sort of an introduction. We can talk about your trading, your hedging needs, whether you're a hedger, speculator, or both. Um, and uh, we can go into the markets a bit. Uh, there's no long-term commitments if you do decide to subscribe. Um, it's not a hard sell. Um, you know, so name, email address, phone number in the free trial form. If you would, please click submit and I'll get the work out to you immediately and uh, follow up with a phone call within two or three days of you starting the free trial. Then I finish up, of course, with a two-week, uh, you know, end uh, phone call to see if you're interested in subscribing. So, um, you know, anyway... That's all I've got to say about that. Please fill out the free trial form. It'd be great. If you haven't had one in six months, uh, feel free to fill one out again. I'm happy to provide that. Uh, we're going to be starting with, all these are weekly charts, by the way. Uh, this is a weekly continuation chart, volume-based rollover for the broader Chicago Board of Trade corn futures market. And by weekly continuation, it is merely the stringing together of high-volume lead contracts over time. We rolled back in June. Uh, when July was front and center, and then from July we rolled to December. Uh, this explained the drop because December which so, was so much more uh, lower in price, but it still is a sell signal event, if you will. It shifted the market from it being in a, in a buy pullbacks mode, which it had been, as you can see here, this speed line held beautifully um, in uh, May, and then we rallied nicely, came back, and then the rollover occurred below it, so we, we shifted from buying downside pullbacks in the 660s uh, at that time, 650s, I think, uh, to selling upside pullbacks against this speed line. So this speed line at 673 half represents long-term resistance that if tested over the next month or two, and I'll get to that in a moment as to what that indication would be, but if tested over the next month or two, can contain buying through the rest of the year, and below which the market remains heavy in the later year, anticipating 464 half by the end of the year. Now, if we do rally up to 673 half over the next three or four weeks, let's say, uh, then, you know, by the end of the year may be a bit of a long shot, but I would anticipate the speed line holding through the rest of the year, and from there, you know, we can certainly fall back into the 464 half area over the following, I don't know, six, nine months, year of trade. 464 half is deemed what I call uh, the new floor of long-term support. We settled above this formation last December. It set off the buy signal rally. I was at the time anticipating 834 and a quarter until we settled below this speed line. And now I'm considering 673 half to be the ceiling rising weekly and below which 464 half in reach over the coming months. Let's take a look at uh, the same chart, but I'm blowing it up. And you can see there's a near-term channel top that held last week during that WASD report. This week at 585 and three quarter. Now the weekly December chart. This, once again, I should have this labeled and I don't, but this is the weekly continuation chart, the stringing together of previous contracts. You see July, May, March, so forth and so on here of 2021, presently reflecting the DS21 contract. Uh, in a moment, I'm going to show you December only data, but right now you've got 585 and three quarter. Uh, that is your ceiling and below which we can quite easily over the next several months fall to 464 half. If we close above 585 and three quarter, uh, then we've got 673 half to 681 and three quarter within as little as three to five weeks. Now, um, hold the phone just a minute with that 585 and three quarter, because the real resistance, in my opinion, is a little higher. And by that, I mean the December only chart this week at 592 even. Last week, we rallied to within two cents of this descending channel top that is based on the June and early July low against this June high. Uh, it is structurally able to contain at least weekly, possibly monthly buying pressures. From here, we can quite easily fall back 
into the $4 handle uh, over the coming month or two. The indication of that in terms of downside acceleration would be a settlement below 549 half at the end of this week. So there is a scenario where we could trade inside this wedge for the next few weeks, but closing outside this wedge would uh, present a multi-week uh, directional indicator in the respective direction. So as I say here, closing below 549 half at the end of this week, 485 even anticipated within about three to five weeks. This is dropping gradually. And as you can see, by late September, it's in the mid 460s. What's significant about the mid 460s again? It is this long-term channel top. So that's, that's able to contain selling through the rest of the year and possibly well into next. Let's take a look at another December only chart, and that's the upside scenario. So once again, if we close above 592, we've got three to five weeks bullish continuation to 653 and three quarter. Now this may well contain monthly buying pressures possibly through the rest of the year itself, but I'm opting more for this uh, long-term area on the weekly chart that I showed here, combination speed line, same descending, a similar descending channel top in the 673 half to 681 and three quarter area. So what am I saying? I'll show you once again that if we close above 592 even, I'll show it better here. We close above 592 at the end of this week, then not only am I looking for 653 and three quarter within three to five weeks, but I think the area to hold out to sell aggressively into would be 673 half to 681 and three quarter, where we can top out through the rest of the year and from here fall back. Okay, that pretty much covers the corn market. I mean, let me let me let me say one more thing about that, and I think this chart kind of says it all right now. For the next few weeks into early September, we have a 549 half floor, a 592 even ceiling. These level, this level is dropping, this level is rising every week, which is why you need to take a look at my newsletters to stay on top of this, because next week I probably will not be covering corn. Um, so you'll be able to stay on top of it if you take the free trial. Closing above 592 even, bullish continuation well into September. Closing below 549 half, bearish continuation well into September. Alrighty, let's move on to the broader cotton market. I do need to show this chart because last week, December 21, this is a weekly continuation chart based on volume, uh, the stringing together of previous contracts. This channel top has been holding beautifully now for, well, since February. We pushed through it. We never closed above it. Last week, we closed above it. This is a long-term buy signal for the broader cotton market. Over the next three to five months, I'm expecting 109.42, where we can top out on a seasonal, say, two to three month basis and fall back. But ultimately, last week's settlement above 91.53, I wouldn't be surprised to see the 150s over the next year or two of activity. And closing above 109.42 at the end of any week would accelerate this. So that would make it even more probable and in much quicker fashion. So 91.53, our floor of long-term support, this is an, a time to be long cotton, to not be hedged on the short side, uh, to be hedge free or long, whatever the case may be, or hedge to the upside, if you, if you will, because I think over, by the end of the year, we could quite easily test 109.42 and more to the upside as we continue into next year. Big, big long-term buy signal. Now, if we close the week back below 91.53, that is just as significant a sign of weakness into later year. Failed long-term buy signals are, in essence, valid mid-term sell signals. The market usually falls off after something like this. Where would it go? I think you need to prepare for then 76.30. We close back below the 91.53 channel top, 76.30. I would give this two to three, three to five months or so, maybe sooner. But I do think by the end of the year, we could certainly be in the mid 70s if we close this week back below 91.53. Until then, all systems go to the upside for the broader cotton market. And finally, October crude. It's presently reflecting the September contract right now, but we rolled during the week this week from September to October. And this 7510 long-term channel top I'm mentioning on the show now for the last couple of months, my subscribers know this well, this is our ceiling through the year. We have tested this late June, early July, and we've backed off, obviously. The target following this test has been the 63 handle support, which mean, remains midterm support. This support at 6351 can contain selling uh, through September, uh, and once tested, we can rally back to 7510 within a matter of a month or two. 
but 7510 is an annual containment resistance area. And I've been mentioning to my subscribers that holding below 7510 not only allows 6351 over the next month or two, maybe this week, but also perhaps the upper 40s as we continue over the next three to five months. So 6351, keep this in mind. This is the weekly continuation chart. If we close below it, bearish continuation. Let me show you the October only weekly chart. And you can see here that it has a whole nother set of formations that are also 6291 to 6304. That is consistent with this former channel top on the weekly chart. So 63 handles support, I'll call it midterm, able to contain selling through September. And from here, we can rally back up to that 7510 channel top over the next month or two. But Closing below 6291 at the end of this week indicates a good annual high. The market then expected to fall all the way south into the upper 40s over the next several months. By that point, October will be off the board. We'd be talking November or December contract, and they both show a similar target. So just know that closing below 6291 at the end of this week indicates bearish continuation over the next several months into the upper 40s, 4720 rising gradually. Holding above the 63 handle will keep this 7510 area in reach over the next month or two, able to contain buying through the rest of the year, possibly well in the next, below which 63 and change expected, and the upper 40s perhaps uh, over the coming months. Now, if we close above 7510, now we've got another long-term buy signal. Over the next three to five months, I would expect this 93.35 to 94.97 region, uh, this area, significant long-term resistance, able to contain not only annual, but possibly decade-long highs if tested, and once again becomes a target if we close this week above 75.10. Don't see that happening. Right now, we're below 75.10, expecting at least the 63 handle over the next uh, few weeks, and perhaps the upper 40s as we continue into late year, early next. I think that's really all that needs to be said for this AgriTalk video supplement for the week of Monday, August 16th. So do yourself a favor. Fill out the free trial form on this website. Take that two-week test drive. You have nothing to lose and much to gain.